There are currently about 2,800 hourly and 250 salaried employees at Flint Assembly. And the workers are represented, of course, by the United Auto Workers, especially Local 598. I know we have a number of UAW members and leadership in the room. Gentlemen and ladies, if you would, please stand and be recognized also. So when the paint shop is finished, GM will have invested more than a billion dollars in its Flint operations since early 2009. This is an incredible testament to the working men and women of the United Auto Workers, GM's leadership, and the community of Flint. Flint Engine has received more than $700 million, Flint Assembly, $328 million to retool the plant for production of the next generation full-size pickup. See, in Flint, we've been known for vehicle manufacturing and innovation for more than 100 years. And it's great to see General Motors stepping up to preserve the carriage and early auto industry heritage with the acquisition of the Flint Carriage Factory One. This is another investment along the University Avenue corridor that is bringing in new energy and will attract people to our community. So these latest investments by General Motors are proof that Flint will continue to be a hub in the auto industry. I'm pleased to be working with my colleagues, Mayor Duggan, Mayor Bernero, along with Michigan State University, the University of Michigan, and Wayne State University, for Michigan's manufacturing triangle to be recognized by President Obama as a manufacturing community region. We're proud of our heritage and our future in the growing global auto industry, and we want the world to know what we have here to offer. We already have the honor of being chosen by the White House as one of the strong cities, strong communities, or SC2 sites for this year. President Obama's Secretary for Housing and Urban Development, Sean Donovan, has recognized Flint's new plan and sees the SC2 support as a way to assist with implementing the plan especially around reducing crime, eliminating blight, and redeveloping brownfield properties. These are all priorities that will position Flint to be more competitive economically, and it's wonderful that our work is being recognized on Pennsylvania Avenue in our nation's capital, and we look forward to the project leader being placed in Flint in the near future. We have a representative from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development here, uh, Mr. Tony Martin, uh, thank you, sir, for the support with SC2. Our comprehensive master plan also commits us to further diversifying our economy. Chapter 9, Economic Development and Education. Objective 8, there's no better example of our growth and diversification than the expansion of the education and medical sectors in Flint. I just can't tell you how proud I am as a Flintstone and a Spartan to see the Michigan State University <laughs> College of Human Medicine establishing a campus in downtown Flint. <laughs> this is part of our new health and wellness district. And there are a lot of partners who have made this happen. So let's first recognize the leaders and doctors who are here representing MSU, including uh, Dr. John Molidor and Dr. Schnuff. Um, please stand and let us recognize you for our, your energy and leadership and your entire team who's here with you. Their talents and their energy are already making Flint. A lot smarter, for sure. Now, the C.S. Mott Foundation, an uptown reinvestment nonprofit corporation, has supported this work in all ways imaginable. I want to recognize Ridgeway White, who's here, the Vice President of Special Projects at the C.S. Mott Foundation. Ridgeway, thank you. So listen to these numbers. The Health and Wellness District will bring together our medical and education assets 
and focuses them in the core of our community. The district already has investment commitments of over $60 million over more than four city blocks. Over $30 million is committed to bricks and mortar construction, and the district is backed by an additional $30 million in programming that's being provided by the C.S. Mott Foundation, MSU, and our three medical institutions, Hurley, McLaren, and Genesis. This health and wellness district is anchored by Exploration Park, the MSU Masters of Public Health and College of Human Medicine, the expansion and relocation of the Flint Farmers Market, and Genesis facilities. This district is creating over 150 new high-paying jobs at MSU and Genesis. In addition, there'll be numerous entrepreneurial opportunities at the market and commercial kitchen. So the primary goal of the district is to provide an opportunity for various health and medical related businesses to co-locate downtown. And the first new component to open its doors was the Genesis Health Clinic on Saginaw Street, which is the west end of the district. And now Genesis is adding a Pace Senior Center on the east end of the district across from the U of M Flint Residence Hall. So representing Flint's medical sector is a delegation from Genesis today, led by CEO Betsy Adderhall. The leadership and staff at Genesis, please rise and be recognized. You see, we're a lot more than a car town. And we're more than a college town or a medical hub. We're a growing and diverse, sustainable 21st century economy. But we also continue to honor those who brought us to this place and the arts and culture that have become so important to our community. For that reason, I asked one of our premier artists and painters to join us here today. He has an amazing exhibit at the Flint Institute of Arts that you have to see. These 19 works on paper include pencil, chalk, acrylic, and watercolor. You'll see Flint's old electric trolleys, the Kresge store downtown, the Buick, and the wonderful images of Flint's families. He is ensuring that we continue to honor our heritage, which has brought us to where we are today. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Laverne Ross. Mr. Ross. So when you add up all these investment commitments, this past year in Flint's private sector, public infrastructure, key initiatives, redevelopment projects, the total is nearly $1 billion. Flint, smaller, yet stronger and smarter. Attracting attention, energy, resources. This is what happens when you have a great plan, a team effort, and a united and engaged community. We continue to need all of your involvement as we work to implement the master plan for a sustainable Flint. In fact, the next steering committee meeting is open to the public and takes place tomorrow night, Tuesday, March 4th, starting at 5.30 at the Flint Public Library. Moreover, the steering committee has approved a set of implementation task groups for each chapter of the master plan. So today, I'm announcing and letting those of you know that the application process is open to be on one of the task groups. It's on the list of top ways that you can implement the master plan for a sustainable Flint, a new list that you'll actually receive as you leave the chambers here today. We're looking for people who will champion the plan, work to see it implemented, and have a passion for this place in our community. I know that everyone who took time to be here tonight fits that bill, and I encourage you to apply. Remember, volunteers are force multipliers, and we need you in this process. 
We need you to prove that this plan is not going to sit on a shelf. We have a responsibility to see the master plan for a sustainable Flint implemented. Under state law, the plan is supposed to be updated every five years, not every 50. So the way I see it, we have five years to implement the short-term action items, get started on the medium and long-term work, and then actually update and amend the plan in 2018. We need to approach this implementation process like a five-year action plan, starting this year. I'm calling for 2014 to be a year of service and action as the first step in a five-year process to realize our vision and improve all parts of our community. Yes, we need to identify new financial resources. But more than that, we need more and more people and partners in our community to step up and do their part to implement the plan. This is why you saw the resource tables set up in the lobby, so that after this, you can sign up to help in all kinds of different and important ways. This is what I really want to talk about this afternoon. A five-year action plan and 2014 as a year of service and action. The, the whole plan is over 250 double-sized pages. And I won't read it all to you today. <laughs> but I am going to focus on five aspects that are related to the priorities that were established right at the beginning of the engagement process with the first round of meetings, uh, surveys, and workshops. These are increasing safety, reducing crime, creating jobs. We have to address blight. We have to improve our infrastructure. And we need to reform our governance. So let's go through our goals and answer the questions. What did we do last year? And what are we going to do this year to make progress on each of these priority areas? Safety. Our goal is simple. We see Flint providing a secure and healthy environment for residents, businesses, students, and visitors. Much easier said than done. But here's how we can do it. We have eight objectives in the master plan that range from developing a state-of-the-art, efficient, and proactive police department to empowering residents to contribute to the safety of their own neighborhoods. The Flint Police and Fire Departments made some great strides in 2013 with their organizational development and also results. Crime and arson rates were down by double digits in 2013. And this trend is continuing into 2014. I want to recognize Flint Police Chief James Tolbert and Flint Fire Chief David Cox for their extraordinary service to our community. Chiefs, please be recognized along with your fellow police officers and firefighters who are here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and be recognized. In addition to Flint's leadership and officers, another main reason why Flint is safer today compared with this time last year is the continued dedication of our county, state, and federal law enforcement partners who are working with us to get offenders off of our streets every day. The U.S. Attorney's Zero Tolerance Gun Crimes Prosecution has removed many of the most dangerous individuals who can continue to break our laws in our own neighborhoods. The Michigan State Police are there with us every day. The MSP are assisting with everything from major case detective investigation to traffic enforcement and response. This means that Flint police officers are more available to respond to your 911 calls and to community issues. I want us to recognize 
Michigan State Police Commander Colonel Christy Etu, who is here, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Sands. Please, ladies and gentlemen, stand and be recognized for your work. I also want to recognize Harvey Hollins, the Director of the Governor's Office of Urban and Metropolitan Initiatives, and Brian Larkin, the Flint liaison for this office. Mr. Hollins, thank you. See, it's the state of Michigan, with Governor Snyder's leadership, that's invested in Flint by funding the city lockup. And I can state as a fact that the city lockup has been an effective crime-fighting strategy. It's also been a regional crime-fighting tool because it's available to all the police agencies in Genesee County with the Sheriff's Administration. In total, 949 felons and 1,576 misdemeanors were processed by the city lockup in 2013. That makes a difference in the streets of Flint. And the governor has proposed that the funding continue going forward. And we urge the state legislature to support this critical investment that is in alignment with our plan to reduce crime. You know, there's always competing needs when it comes to budget and funding. But I believe that the data from Flint shows that these dollars are providing a very high return on investment. As state revenues continue to come in above projections, I suggest public safety be a top priority in Lansing. The sad fact is that in the state of Michigan, with all of its local units combined, we have approximately 2,000 fewer police officers across the state than we had 10 years ago. And now that the state revenues are back to pre-recession levels, there needs to be a major investment in public safety so that everything else we aim to do with education, economic development, and neighborhood stabilization has the foundation of a safe community to build on. So I urge the governor and the legislature to fully fund revenue sharing and invest in initiatives such as the Secure Cities proposal before lowering tax rates. It's just not fair to make local communities pay for the price of the recession and then divert our, econ our economy and our recovery. Now, voters have a role in this too. I want to call on Flint's voters in August to show support for the statewide referendum to provide 100% replacement revenue for the necessary changes with the personal or business tax reform. So when you see that ballot, vote yes for guaranteed local replacement revenue so we can provide for the public safety services especially that are so important. You see, in public safety is nearly 80% of our general fund budget here in Flint. So it's as much determined by the budget and legislative process as it is the community's needs. But thankfully, we have Flint citizens who are not waiting on the Capitol to tackle crime in their neighborhoods alongside law enforcement. Chief Tolbert has made it a high priority to strengthen relationships with community groups. In the master plan, this is the second objective on public safety, and second only elim to eliminating blight, which I'll address later. So working with community groups and concerned citizens, this is how we're going to reduce crime in Flint long term. The Flint Police Department has a new commitment to placing each neighborhood and block club meeting on the patrol calendar so that command officers know to attend. The Flint Police Department is also operating in a more transparent fashion and providing information to the public on a daily basis on major crimes. It's posted every day on the city's website. And in the future, you'll find a new interactive tool will be in place for citizens and